Hey folks, it's your pal Mike Shea from SlyFlourish.com and Twitter.com slash SlyFlourish here with another episode of Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep. Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep is a show shot 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Times on Sundays in which I go through steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. That's not it. Where's Return of the Lazy Dungeon? There it is. Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my D&D game. This show, like all of the rest of the Sly Flourish Empire, is brought to you by the backers of Sly Flourish on Patreon. If you go to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish, you too can be a Sly Flourish patron. Doing so gets you a monthly newsletter and access to an exclusive adventure called Regnum Rattus, The Rats in the Cellar. It's also your way to help pay for shows like this, pay for the equipment and the bandwidth and all of the other odds and ends and other costs that are associated with keeping up the website and the streams and the YouTube videos and everything else that I do. Uh, so thank you for that. We are also, as I showed before, running a Patreon, a, a Patreon, a Kickstarter right now for Fantastic Lairs. Myself, Scott Fitzgerald Gray, and James Intercasso have partnered up on a book of what very likely will be 20 locations of all tiers of play from level one to level 20, uh, boss battles and fantastic encounters that you can drop right into your uh, D&D game. So this is a uh, way to uh, hopefully help people do the heavy lifting of building some boss fights for their games. And um, Scott and James and I have been working on this for about half a year now. We've got rough drafts of the first 10 layers. And I know James and I have started on the second set now that we know that it's going to make it. Oh, yeah. Do we have a link to the Kickstarter? That would be a good thing, huh? We should probably have that. Uh, let's go to Kickstarter. Uh, fantastic layers. Hey, look at that. Fantastic layers Kickstarter. There is the link. Uh, yeah, hey, look, somebody else posted. Hey, my mom is here. Null Zone is here. And uh, Evil John and all sorts of folks are here. Very good. I'm happy to have you all here today. It's going to be an interesting episode today. We're, it's going to be a different episode than typical. But yes, or you can go, right, thank you, RSR70. You can go straight to fantasticlayers.com. Fantasticlayers.com uh, has is the permanent URL, well, as permanent as any URL is, for uh, getting to all things Fantastic Layers. So right now you can go and back on the Kickstarter. You can also download the free two layers, which is right here. Uh, you, this is a free preview, 17-page preview that includes two layers, Caves of the Cockatrice, a level one layer, and uh, Ash Snarl's Secrets, uh, which is a level five layer. So it gives you a good idea of what these layers look like. If you want to see more about what these layers look like, last week's episode, I went through this whole preview and talked about the design and everything like that. I'm hoping sometime this week to also sit down and do another video where I just go over this whole this whole preview and talk about some of our philosophies and stick it up on my YouTube channel. Uh, but for now, you can go to the Kickstarter uh, and you can um, take a look at the preview. It's a really great preview. I'm really happy. Uh, both, you know, all, all three of us are really happy with how the preview came out. And we think it's a good product all on its own. I think it's like $5 value all on its own that you get for free. And it's free to everyone. You don't have to back to Kickstarter to see it. You can just go and see it. Uh, if you do back to Kickstarter, you're going to be uh, well rewarded. It's going to be an awesome book. Lots of you know, full color maps, full color art, 20, 20 layers at least. We might even have one or two more. We'll see. We're talking about some things and uh, other stretch goals that we're talking about right now. So yeah, it's going to be a good deal. Uh, all right. But I talked about that last week. So this week is going to be slightly different. Uh, let's see, I guess it was a while ago, a few months ago, one of the players in my Sunday game, Juliet, mentioned the fact that she uses a tool called Notion to keep track of her game notes. She also uses it for her game prep. And, um, shout, uh, yeah, so one other question. Will the maps be big enough for VTT? Yes, in fact, the, if you go to the Kickstarter, on the Kickstarter page, there's a link to the VTT compatible maps for the two sample layers. So if you want to see what the other maps are going to look like, you can try those out. They have the grid dimensions in the file name, so you can tell exactly how many squares it'll be to drop it into a v your VTT of choice. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so Juliet mentioned this tool called Notion. And, you know, I have done lots of surveys and lots of discussions with people about what tools they use in order to prep for their D&D game. And uh, probably, you know, not most... But the, the tool that is used by the largest number of DMs, which is not the majority, because it's like a shallow curve of tools, um, is OneNote, Microsoft OneNote. People love OneNote. And it's a, it's a really cool app for being able to capture all kinds of things and build hierarchy and stuff like that. It's sort of like a personal wiki. People really like it. And I tried it. I think I actually tried it on this show. And I liked it. Uh, but it had a couple of things about it that I didn't really dig, which kind of steered me away. And number one was whenever I switched to a tool like that, I want an exit strategy. 
I want to know what happens when I decide I don't want to use that tool anymore. Can I get all of my data out of it? And with OneNote, it's really hard to get all your data out of it. So uh, this is kind of a nerd problem. Most people don't care. And if your notes are relatively not not permanent, like if you really don't care about going back 20 years later and getting your notes, your game notes, then you don't really need to worry about this too much. And if you're using OneNote and you love it, go with the gods. You know, I'm not trying to convince anybody to switch off of any tool they are currently using. Um, a lot of people, I, I, I kept going back and forth. Like, should I use OneNote more? You know, so I really like that there's lots going on with OneNote and you can drop images into it and everything like that. Um, but yeah, the, uh, well, the other thing is that the mobile version of OneNote was a little weird. It had like horizontal scrolling and I, I don't like horizontal scrolling on, on mobile devices. Like I, don't, I just, you know, just want to scroll up and down. I don't want to scroll left and right. And because everything in OneNote was sort of like a page within a page, it meant that you got these really odd, it was sort of like you have these blocks and you can set the blocks up anywhere on the page. And that got really weird. So uh, so I kind of switched off of that. And I've always been a big text guy. I just like writing my stuff in text. So um, I've been writing my notes in text uh, using a tool called Sublime. You can use any text editor. Everyone always asks, oh, what tool is that? And it doesn't matter, but I'm using Sublime. Um, but uh, uh, I... I've always been keeping my stuff in text because text lasts. As long as computers have been around, there's been text files, basically. It's like 40 years they've been doing text files. So I'm pretty sure if I keep my text files handy, I'll be able to read them 40 years from now. So that is all That is all really great. Um, but then last week, you know, in that sort of random surfing around the net, you sort of run into things. And I ran into a concept called Zettelkasten. And Zettelkasten is a note-taking technique. Uh, you can Google it. I haven't found great URLs to describe Zettelkasten. And we're not going to get too much into Zettelkasten. It is German. It's German for box of notes, I think, or box of cards, something like that. Um, and a Zettel is like a card or a note. Um, so this note-taking technique, some crazy professor came up with it and he kept track of 70,000 physical three by five note cards. You know, he had a bunch of note cards, by the way, you're not a really professional DM unless you have note cards within hands reach at all time. So uh, he would use, I think he used cards that were bigger than this, but essentially it was like the things that would go on. It was a, it was a note taking technique that broke away from linear note taking and got into the idea that every idea is an object is a, is a, is a, is a node in a network. And if you have, a thought here and another thought here and both thoughts were related you then had this relationship between two thoughts right so let's say i'm talking about huh i wonder how i'll make a marilith really really tough to fight in a in a lair i wonder why i'd be thinking about a lair in a fight uh maybe i'll write down some thoughts about making a Mar marilith really tough on this card and that's that's an idea right and then the other idea is what are the general things that characters can do that really screw up boss monsters, right? That really nail boss monsters. Things like Force Cage and Hypnotic Pattern and Stunning Strike and other ways that kind of get past all of the major threats, huge spikes in damage, right? And so I write those ideas down. I say, you know, I'm gonna talk about those. So now I have these two ideas, right? Over here, I got ways to make a Marilith tough. Over here, I've got an idea about how to, um, about the general ways bosses, but those are connected, right? Those are two ideas that are connected. So then on, in, in this guy's format, in this thing, you would write on this card, you know, a little tag that said C card 11682. And this is card 11682, which is the other one. And on this one, you'd write 116 or 11039. And that went to this card. So now you've got a relationship between these two cards. They each have an ID, a way to identify that particular card. And you can set up links between cards. And then you just stick them in your file folder. File folder. And then when you're talking about boss monsters, you pull it out and it says C11682. And you go, oh, I pull that one out. And then you got 11682. And now you got a stack of cards of related ideas that might have not occurred to you at the same time at all. So that's a general idea about Zettelkasten. So I got interested in that idea. I thought, huh, because I'm a notebook you know, nerd and got fountain pens. Look at my, got my fountain pens right here. And I, so I, I'd like doing all that kind of stuff. So I was thinking about that and I was like, how does that relate to D and D? So then I was thinking about it for D and D more. I said, you know, that, that idea, like what tools can people use? And I saw people in chat here talking about obsidian and obsidian is a tool that lets you write markdown files, which is like the text files that I write for my show notes or for my, for my game notes here. And, um, lets you interconnect them in the Zettelkasten method. And I actually have Obsidian running on my Mac upstairs and it's very cool, so I like it. But that's not really what we're talking about today. There's another tool that's, you know, 
kind of similar and you can kind of do Zettelkasten-y sort of things with it called Notion. And again, I was like, oh, Notion, that's what my friend Juliet told me about. So let me look at Notion. And then bang, I'm like, whoa. And I went way into the deep end with Notion. Uh, this is probably middle or late last week. And I was like, you know, this would be a really great way to manage D&D games. And I sat down, I said, what would it be like if I took my normal game notes and I stuck them into Notion? And let me uh, pull up Notion. So a little bit about Notion. Uh, as you can see, I went over the deep end very quickly, and we're going to talk about all this today while we're preparing for today's D&D game using my new notes in Notion. So um, uh, Notion.so is the URL if you care to uh, go there. Uh, I will paste that into the channel here. Uh, does that link? I think that links. So uh, Notion is uh, a free tool for personal use without ads you can if you're using it in an enterprise setting you can you can charge for it you can also share notes and i'm going to talk about that because i have a whole notebook that i can share with you guys that i've been working on so um and the, the idea behind notion is it's similar to one note you have pages uh, i'm going to pop open the side window here so uh for each i have a notebook so this notebook for example is called this the ever on the second morning this is a top level notebook that is used for both of my two Eberron games, my Wednesday game and my Sunday game. Both of them have enough stuff that connects the two of them that it's easier to have one notebook for both games and that way I'm not replicating a bunch of stuff than it is to have two notebooks, one for each game, which would make the most sense. And if they were different campaigns, I would probably do them that way. But because, um, yeah, you do not need to download Notion. In fact, it is in a web browser. It has clients for Mac and PC and I think Android and iOS and web. So it's on everything. And that's really cool. That means like, you know, you can sneak away at work and load up your notion and drop down some notes. Um, so you have your top level note and the main, the main uh, function of a thing is a page. You're creating a page. So I'm gonna just make it page. Quickly add a page. And you say uh, new page and it can be any kind of thing or you can just put text. This, this is some text. Now, what I like about it is it also does markdown. So you can do heading one, this is a heading. And then you can do like a list and say, here's some stuff, here's more stuff. Very quick, right? Very easy to do. Um, I'm gonna delete this page though, because I don't need that. So we'll go to here and go to delete. Uh, so that is the general idea is you generate a page. You can have pages that are inside of other pages and you can put anything you want inside of a page. You can drop images in there. You can do all sorts of stuff. That's the basic functions. By the way, one thing I'm not gonna do on the show is give an overall like tutorial on how to use Notion. I'm gonna talk about how to use Notion for a D&D campaign. And if you wanna know more about Notion, they have a bunch of videos on their website that you should go watch and I'll teach more about Notion. But I'm gonna tell you about like a key thing. So then I was thinking about, okay, that's great. And I can set up a page. So like, here's an example of uh, my notes page, right? And this is for, let me see if I have one. I think I have one for uh, old adventures. We'll go for, here is the game notes that I had for my game on Wednesday, right? And I can set up my strong start and my scenes. And I have my secrets and clues. I have monsters and treasure. You see, all just listed in here like normal. The problem, and look, I could put a nice little piece of art and you can drop cool artwork in there, which I recommend you do. That's, that's one thing I like to do is like not every page, but almost every page has a nice piece of artwork just to get my mind into world of D&D, &D, right? How to, how to break away from the, the reality for a while and escape to D&D &D, and you get little cool pictures like that. I didn't think I did it for all the game notes, but you can see that you could do this. Now, the problem with this is if we're thinking about that Zettelkasten idea of like, how do you inter interlink, uh, how do you interlink related ideas? This doesn't really let you do that particularly well. You can link to any page and we do. So like, here's a link to the characters page and the NPCs page and locations page. But what about each character? Like, what about every NPC? So then I said, you know, what if instead they have a, they have a thing in here, one of the page types, is called a database. They call it a database. And uh, an example of that database is here, the campaign database, right? So the campaign database, and as you see, uh, it doesn't really, this looks pretty terrible. That's a bummer. If I expand it out, I think it'll, there. Oh, look, one pixel out and it expands a little better. So uh, I am using the gallery view. There's different views. So if you wanna see what it looks like in a table view, for example, um, you know, this is like my database, right? But it looks boring as hell in that one. So instead we do a gallery view. 
And for every entry in here, we have an image. So these are characters. So here's the character for Saber. And this is a key. See the tags you can add. So this is a database entry. It has when, you, when I created the thing. It has tags, which you define. Uh, and in this case, I added another one, which is a player. Who is the player that's playing that character? And then I can have a description and a picture. And it's a really easy way to set up uh, uh, a thing. Now, the nice idea is if I think about this as like one entry in the database, I like to refer to it as a card. If we get back to that Zettelkasten idea. Um, and this card now represents that character. And I can put anybody in here. So I've got all the characters. And, you know, these are all characters from uh, my Wednesday game or my Sunday game, right? And I put images in for each of them and they've, they've got there. But look, oh, look, I have an, an area too. I have the hub, right? And in this one, I just put the map in. My other group is going to be going to the hub soon, so I need to fill this out. Uh, but I threw the Dyson map in here. And I even have a link uh, that lets me uh, go to outside and pull up the larger map because you can put links in here. And they have a nice bookmark with a preview. There's a really cool thing about the preview too. I'll get to in a minute. Um, oh, look, I have NPCs, right? So one thing is I put a tag for this. I don't think I need to have a monster tag for Oni because it's not like I'm going to look up at all the Onis. But I was getting a little crazy with tags. Generally, you only need to tag for anything you want to filter on, right? That's probably a key, I think. I think this is a key. By the way, one major disclaimer is that I have spent five days on this. So I'm not an expert at all. I've been toying with it for like five days and not five days straight, but like a few hours. So this is a few hours worth of thought that went into this. I might completely change my mind and go, oh, wow, that was such a terrible idea. So if you're watching this now and you're really impressed with this, please look at stuff I have done in the future to see if I've changed my mind on this stuff. So if you're watching this video right now, Take a look at the date of this video and then see, have I talked about this in anything in the future? I know I'm going to have a Sly Flourish article about this, and I will always be keeping that Sly Flourish article up to date with new ideas. So check out the Sly Flourish. It's not written by the time I'm doing this, but so on. And again, an image. Oh, look, and here's your uh, little Zettelkast, an idea of linking one thing to one thing else. So I have a card here for Lido Skull. He's one of my villains. He's tagged as a villain. Um, he has uh, an Oni, you know, a villain, Orum, Lido Skull, you know, NPC. So I overdid it with the tags. In fact, we're just gonna we're just gonna get rid of that one, and we're gonna get rid of that one, because um, I don't really that that's too taggy. Uh, you know, I can just mention this stuff. It's really the only tags I want are the views. So I'm gonna go lighter on the tags. Uh, however, oh look, I have a link to Valentine Flame Touched. Who's that? Well, Valentine Flame Touched is Lido Skull's right hand. So in this case, like having a Lido skull tag might not be so bad. I'm st I still think I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to go bang and we're going to get rid of because I don't really keep track of monsters either. So I have too many tags, right? So we're going to delete. We're going to do a little cleanup here because I don't, I, I went crazy with the tags. And the reality is you don't need tags for everything. You need tags for did I delete villain? Please tell me I didn't. Oh, no, I didn't delete villain. Good. That would have been bad. Um, I really only need tags for the things that I'm going to filter on. So if you had a lot of like emerald, if you wanted a page that was like, show me all my emerald claw guys, you could do that. But how many do you have? Two? You know, it's not that many. Um, so in this case, I went, I definitely went nutty with the tags. There, that's a much better selection of tags, right? So I wonder if I got rid of all the tags that were in it. So in this case, I linked uh, Valentine Flame Touch, who is Lido Skull's right hand. You know, it says Lido Skull's right hand. In fact, you can you can highlight that and link it. Um, so we'll do that. Like if I go here and I go to up here and I say copy link. Where's the copy link? Copy link. And then I go here and I just go Lido Skull and I put link and bang. And so now Lido Skull is linked to Lido Skull, right? Very cool. Valentine Flame Touch. So that way I'm linking related ideas together so that when I'm navigating this stuff, I can kind of quickly bring it up. And that's that Zettelkast an idea. You have an idea. The idea, you know, the, the card for Valentine Flame Touch is this thing. It is tagged so I can filter on all the uh, things that are tagged. But also it's linked to related things like Lido Skull. So that is a handy way. Oh, and uh, Sister of Flame Wind, right? So I can... Uh, I don't know if I have a flame wind card. Uh, let's go back to the campaign database. Do I have a flame wind? I do, right? So uh, let's go uh, here and we'll go to copy link. 
And in here, we'll say Sister of Flame Wind. Link. Bang. So now there's a weird concept in Zettelkasten called backlinking. And in backlinking, it essentially says if you've ever linked something, uh, you should link the other way, right? So Sister of Flame Wind. And if I go in here, uh, I say sister or brother. No, sister, right? They're both they're both women. Sister of Valentine. Think, think, link, bang. All right. So now I'm linked the other way, right? All of them, uh, you don't have to right click to link. You can select and press Control K. Good. So thank you, Wayne, for a uh, uh, yeah keyboard shortcut. That's handy. So I guess if I go here and hit Control K, I can just paste in a link. The one thing it doesn't, I really wish it had like a lookup, right? So like I'm trying to interlink stuff inside the own thing. It kind of sucks that I have to go back to the campaign database and I have to go find Cavella. She's in here somewhere. There she is, right? And I have to copy the link here. And where did I see Cavella? I was just now I already forgot where I was. Uh, probably Lita Skull, right? Uh, control K. Hey, look at that. See, I'm learning. So now I have Cavella of Dask is linked in here, right? Oh, look. And I already. Uh, although that's going to fail. Oh, no, look. So that was cool. I forgot I did that. Leader of the Dask. And I linked to the Dask. And you go there, and it goes right to DD Beyond talking about the Dask. How handy, right? Wiki style, Lita Skull, right? Uh, and I say Lita Skull. Calvella is also an Oni, and I can get right to the Oni thing. So I set up all of these links. Now, these are all in these cards, right? And then my only real key for a card is like, you know, link when you want or when you can and then drop an image in there so that it looks good in gallery view. That's the main thing. So I have this campaign database, right? And it's got everything. It's got characters, it's got locations, it's got NPCs. You know, here's a location I haven't even started. Uh, I haven't even started filling out yet. I just know, hey, I want Blaine the Mono in here. So I Karash, Karashk the Lightning Rail. Karsh, Karshak, Karshak the Lightning Rail is gonna be a, a thing, a sentient Lightning Rail, that's insane. Uh, I have some other villains in here. I have other NPCs in here. Uh, I have items in here. This is a magical sentient item. All right, lots of stuff. I try to put images in for all this stuff. Here's Mac Knifeborn. Mac Knifeborn is running the Cafe Obscura for my Wednesday group, right? So I threw all that stuff in here. It's all in these database cards. Um, Nelson, yeah, watching you do this, I was wishing for a wiki style linking where, yeah, you ought to be able to do like double bracket and just have it linked to something internally. Uh, save having to find a URL for each cross link. That's right. And I and I wish you could back, I wish it backlinked, right? I wish it said like, here's all the, I wish there was a way I could drop a little widget in here. It said, show me all the stuff that's linking to here. Those would be handy. So anyway, I'm not going to sit here and complain about what it doesn't have. Uh, but that's one of the things. And Spaz has said, check out Zettler. Yeah, there's a lot of tools. So the other thing is like, as soon as I posted this, I got lots of ideas for lots of tools that a lot of people sent me. And I'm just trying one out, right? Like this is one, and now I'm a little bit invested in it. Again, it's not the only one, and there are better, there are probably better ones out there. Um, and you should look for the better ones too. But right now I'm just talking about this one. So here it is, because it does most of everything I want. But Obsidian was very cool too. If you really wanted to get into Zettelkasten style stuff and you want to be writing in Markdown all the time, uh, Zettelcast is not a bad way to go. However, I think right now it's easier for me to kind of use this and I kind of dig it. There's other factors in this that I, that I really dig. Uh, so I have this campaign database. It's got all these things in here. As you can see, it's linked with character Sunday, character Sunday, character Wednesday. Um, I don't need a player info tag. Uh, we can delete that tag. Don't need that. Um, so I have, I have all these tags in here. So then what I did um, is, uh, yeah, uh, John Johnny4 has a tool too. He sent me a link to it and I wanna try it out. I have not had a chance to try it out yet though, but I'm, it, it looks pretty cool too. And given that it's written by a guy who's all about D&D, maybe even better than this. Um, so, okay, so I have all these things in this database, right? And I set up this database. I'm not gonna talk about how to set up the database itself, although I will show you the, the link that I've got there or how to make your own. Uh, but then the cool bit is I can create a view. So here, for example, are the Wednesday characters, right? And these are all of the characters that were tagged with my Wednesday D and D game. And in fact, why don't we go ahead and use this as our, uh, game prep and we're going to follow, uh, so June 7th is today. So let's, here is a, uh, I'm sorry. I'm a little all over the place. 
So I have a page for every session, right? And, and down here, I have a session planning template. So I can, for example, why don't we do that? Let's just, let's delete this, delete. And we go to session planning, right? And I'm gonna say, make a duplicate of this. So now I have a duplicate and I go in here and I, I locked my, my page. Oh, no, I guess I didn't lock the page. I should have. And now we say 7 June, 2020, Sunday, Ebron, right? So now I have a new page and I'm gonna drag it up to the top because it's like, we might as well keep it right at the top. So now I have a brand new page of my session template. And the first step is review the characters. This should actually be linked. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about it. Anyway, go review the characters. So I go to, oh, I know why I can't do it. And that's because I'm running two different sets. And if I linked to one or the other, uh, it would be the wrong one for the other one. So first step, review the characters. Uh, and if you'll notice this template here follows all of the eight steps from Return to Lazy Dungeon Master, right? And I put a little thing here, blank adventure. Step one, review the characters, strong start, what scenes, secrets and clues, fantastic locations, NPCs, monsters, treasure. All of the eight things are in here, right? And now some of these you don't actually have to do in these notes. You instead review them on another page. So review the characters, okay? We go here, we say Sunday, and bang, here are my Sunday characters. So we have Zarentir Delandar. We'll pull up his thing. Uh, here's his uh, page. Now, uh, one thing, here's a little trick that I found out. So I'm going to go into, uh, I'm over on Beyond, into my collections, my campaigns, and Sunday D&D group view campaign. And I'm going to go to my Zaren Zalandir. Oh, yeah, so I already have my, uh, where's my Zalandir? And I go to view. And I think, can I get a shareable link, right? So I copy the shareable link and we're gonna delete this. And we're gonna add a return here and I paste the URL and this I would create bookmark. And here's the cool bit. When you do it from the shareable link, it gives a thumbnail of their stats. So I can give a quick look in there and I can see what their initiative bonus is. I can see what their AC and hit points are. I get a tiny little icon inside this that shows me their base stats for something. And if I click it, it goes right to their larger, their larger character, right? So it's a handy little thing. That's why I went through that trouble of getting the shareable link because the shareable link does that, but the other ones don't. So I have Zarentir in here. He's played by Pat. Uh, he is the one, the House Lierandir, um, Storm, Mark of Storm, Half-Elf. And uh, he recently stole the keys to his father's uh, airship, the Gold Bright. And I have some adventure options. And you can put anything you want in here, right? So that's Zarentir. Uh, now we have Banner, uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna delete this. Uh, this is before I learned this trick, right? So we go to Banner. And you go to the shareable link. Da, da, da. Copy that, run this Sunday, and drop the, you create bookmark. Banner is a uh, Warforged Paladin, uh, and see, AC 22, 44 hit points, 22 AC. Man, I'll tell you, characters love their high AC. Or players love their high AC. Just hit him with a lot of wisdom saves. Uh, Warforged Paladin becoming God, fought for years uh, with the... Um, Years in the Last War was part of the Lord of Blades and broke away. I think the Lord of Blades is going to be a whole plot when they get to the Mornland that I'm going to go to. But think about that. Uh, and part of it is looking to, to become part of the Becoming God. Uh, and, you know, dealing with the Godforged, who is this group of people that are trying to, to, to build their God, which I think is a really cool idea. Uh, so there again. Oh, good one. Uh, Saber. So uh, my friend Pat does not use D&D Beyond. So I can't put a D&D Beyond uh, link for his character. He does everything pen and paper, pencil and paper. He's playing a long tooth shifter monk, bounty hunter, uh, called to the temple, um, and uh, belongs to the Order of the Four Winds and wants to do more with the Four Winds. That is Saber. Uh, Shane Husk. Uh, again, let's go back here and pull up a new link for Shane Husk. Uh, I think, and, oh, look at his background. Look at that craziness. I want that. Uh, shareable link and Shane Husk and we will delete this uh, and create bookmark. 
Shane Husk is a wob hobgoblin wizard crime novelist uh, and sage. Former best-selling book of the Mornland and wants to see if he can do it again. Previously served at the Heirs of Dakan. Uh, so he has clues that could help him help him, help him find Claw Rift. So, um, yeah, that can, that can work. Uh, and what else? Yeah, and he's kind of a bad novelist, which I kind of dig. Uh, so that is Shane Husk. And then we have Shift. Juliet is returning. She missed the last two games, but she'll be at this one. And uh, Shift. And they go think and copy, share the link. And we go to Shift. And we delete this. Oops. And we create a bookmark. Shift is a Warforged Warlock. One of the first Warforged ever built was a human experiment. Uh, oh, look. Uh, uh, I misspelled that. How, there we go. Extension. Uh, an expansion from House Kenneth. Uh, but it turns out that it was actually um, the uh, necromatic power of Karnath that helped fuel her. And that she's got some touch and is connected to the Emerald Claw and to Lady Elmaro. So that is... Uh, uh, spammers uh how do i get rid of a spammer block block report report uh spam there we go sorry uh, uh we'll go with scanning god i'm sure make it hard way harder hey twitch Make it easier for getting rid of spam bots. Crying out loud. Uh, so, um, yeah, and that avatar badass. So, uh, where was I? Uh, shift, yes. Uh, Fueled by Lady Omaro. And uh, let's see. Who did I not do? Arwen Chi. Uh, again, we'll delete this. And we go to, uh, where was I? Oh, I was right over here, I think. That's why you recruit a mod army. I really do need to have a mod army. I should, I should give it to a couple of you and you can mod for me. Um, chi, I'm so used to doing everything all by myself. And we go to share a link. And we copy that, go back in here. We are going to create a bookmark. So that way we've got the little stat. Um, scribing Gnome Artificer, father was a famous hero, has a dodecahedron from her father that probably has the answer to how to find Claw Rift in it. So that's really a major, a major character study there. So uh, that is Chi. So as you can see, uh, I have a nice list of all of the characters on this page. Again, I picked some nice little artwork from Eberron to kind of get me in the mood. And um, this is a view into the campaign database, right? This is a view into the larger database. So when I update these, they're updated in the database. If I, if I link to or I pass any of these into any other pages, they're always up to date. So that, that, is, that works really well. Uh, so now in my notes, I have reviewed the characters. I go, dink, I reviewed the characters. And now I need a strong, whoops, I need a strong start. This is step two. It's already, oh my God, 1034, we're on step two. So the characters just uh, infil, in our last game, the characters infiltrated the lower tunnels beneath uh, Morgrave University in their attempt to get into uh, Tower Six of Morgrave University. Um, I think that we're gonna have a wandering, um, the cool bit will be a wandering um, uh, jackalware uh, spy of um, Valentine Valentine Flame Touched, right? Um, so uh, yeah, so so the the situation, if you if you will is that they are they are in a lower a set of lower catacombs and they're making their way to um uh they're making their way to to the the vaults beneath tower six they're going to end up having to break into the vaults and inside the vaults 
there's a few things going on. Uh, there is a stone golem, which is way more powerful than the characters can deal with, uh, that is the guardian of the vaults. And um, Valentine Flame Touch, who is a Lamia, has the she got the key to control the golem from Leto Skull, who asked her to break into the vault and get the Tome of Kul Seer, a very powerful book of necromatic and uh, illusionary magic that exists there. Um, so I think that it'll be fun. They In the last session, they were halfway through the vaults. They found some sarcophagi that had uh, mummy, these, these uh, powerful mummies in them. And they fought the mummies. I can't remember who the mummies were. Were they? Uh, they weren't drow mummies of Zendrak. They came from somewhere else, but they were kind of like stashed down here. And they opened one up and it attacked. And um, they defeated it. And uh, they are now kind of like wandering down there to try to find their way into the vaults. So the idea that a jackalware spy kind of sees them and tries to run away. And then, you know, uses their shapeshift ability to pretend that like, oh, I just wandered down here. I'm just nobody. But really, they're a spy for Flame Touch who's looking for an escape route from Tower 6 herself after she goes and gets the book for Leto Skull. Leto Skull was more than happy to have the vault, the book in the vault, but he needs it now because he's going to take that in the crystal and he's going to head to Claw Rift, right? He's on his way. So uh, I think that that is a good secret, right? Uh, Leto Skull... So Lita Skull is collecting the Tome of Kulsir because he's getting ready to take it and his Eberron crystal to Claw Rift. His uh, Eberron Dragon Shard, right? So he's getting ready to go. Um, so the scenes are continue uh, crawling to Vault 6. Uh, to, the, to the vault below, to the vault below Tower 6. Um... Uh, so I think the jackal wares have made a mess. Um, so uh, another secret is Flame Touch is a Lamia, uh, who is um, uh, Lido Lido Skull's right hand. Uh, it might have been Takani. I can't remember. So I rolled on my 1D100 Eberron factions, and I hit one of the factions, and that was what I flavored the mummies as, but I can't remember what it was. So Crawl to Tower 6. Uh, face, um, uh, break into Tower 6. Uh, deal with the stone golem. Deal with uh, deal with Valentine Flame Touched, uh, break, uh, get the Toma Kulsir. Cool. So those are some quick scenes for today's game. And it, it's a big mess, but basically they're breaking into a vault and they're stealing a book. Like that's the, <laughs> you know, that's the, when it comes down to like what's going on. So we have your secrets and clues. One trick, uh, somebody, gave me this idea. I can't remember who. I can't remember if it was somebody on um, Twitter when I was talking about this. But the idea of making these uh, checks mean that I can sort of check them off after I've given them to the players. And that shows me which secrets I haven't yet revealed. I thought that was a cool idea. So I, I did the, the check boxes there. That's the sort of thing where like trying to do that, you can do something like that in Markdown pretty easily. But this is a little like UI thing that makes it easy for me to... Um, uh, you know, makes it easy for me to, uh, uh, you know, run this game. So, so that works out. So what other secrets do we have down there? Uh, there is a powerful orb of, uh, I want the dreamscape. What's the, of, uh, Dal core in the vault across from the tome of call, sir. 
Powerful orb of the of the Dalcor, and that's an item that I have called Lac. Lac is a, um, a sentient orb of the Dreaming Dark that is a crystal ball, but it also shows you terrible things. This is an idea I got from Black Thirteen in uh, the 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 Dark Tower books. I've been reading all the Dark Tower books again. I'm on the last one. I've read eight of them, I think, at this point. Seven of them. There's seven books total, but there's an eighth, and I already read the other eighth. So yeah, I've been combing through all those. So I got lots of Dark Tower in my head. Um, so a magical, yeah. So the, think of like a really evil version of Palant the Palanthier. Uh, what other secrets are going on down there? Uh, Lido uh, funded the construction of Tower Six and the Vault. Uh, a very powerful sage and seer resides in Morgrave. Um, very powerful sage and seer resides in Morgrave University. Um, the emerald claw is on its last legs. Uh, it has been thwarted, but, and is getting more dangerous. Uh, that's a fun one. Um, anything with the Dask? What's going on with the Dask? So uh, Cavella wants the book and plans to bring it. Uh, plans to bring the book of Colser to the daughters of Sorakel. Um, so the daughters of Sorakel are the leaders of the Droam, and uh, Cavella has been told by them to acquire the Tome of Kulsir and give it to them. This is basically lots of people are trying to make nuclear bombs, and the characters have to decide who should be able to do so uh, or not. Um, and we can add another, if we want another angle, uh, the... Um, King's Dark Lanterns also seek the Tome of Kul, also seek the Tome of Kul, sir, and want control of the masses, massive Eberron Dragon Shard. Uh, what else? The Grand Duchy of Fenwick gets the bomb. Yep. Um, oh, I guess so. What can Lack show them? Lack, uh, the Dreaming Dark. Uh, hope to open the gateway between Dalcor. And Eberron again. Wow, I didn't spell that right. Eberroin. Lack in the Dreaming Dark hope to open the gateways between Dar Dalcor and Eberron. Uh, what else is going on in any other big things in the city? Um, some members of the Orum uh, are concerned about Leto recent activities. So, yeah. So there's my secrets, you know, my 10 secrets. So then uh, I have fantastic locations. And again, uh, I don't know, this isn't gonna go to the right place. So we're gonna just delete this. And that's because this is a different notebook than the other one. Um, so when I want to create a fantastic location, uh, if I don't have, sometimes I have them already, but sometimes I don't. So I have a locations one. And you remember the, um, so uh, Morgrave University, uh, this is tower six, right? So I should make a, I'm going to make a page. Uh, I'm going to copy this though, copy that link. Um, 
No, that's not where I went. There we go. Now, why is it going the wrong ones? Yeah, so uh, we're going to copy that image. This is the vault of Tower 6. And I am going to create a new one and call it, all right, and it's a location and I paste this in here. So now I've got a map. And in my vault for, so the, this is the vault for Tower 6 itself. Um, and we will do a, uh, a few rooms, right? And so, and, and some of these rooms I already ran, I ran Tower 6 for my other group, so I already have a bunch of ideas. So we have Vault of Lack, and that has, um, uh, whoops, our pedestal with, what is going on? Sometimes weird things happen. I don't know how to spell pedestal either. And we don't need that to be bolded. Uh, uh, pedestal with black orb. And we'll have dead uh, dead jackalers. And in here, we're going to have a alep. Alleps are cool monsters. Uh, we have the um, main staircase. Keep hitting the wrong key. Uh, and this has the uh, stone golem. Um, we have, uh, what else? Uh, so we have a few others. I'm actually gonna steal some from my other notes. I don't, in, in, the, in the interest of time, I don't think I'm gonna fill all this out right now. Uh, Cause I have it in my other notes from my other session. Generally speaking, when you have more time, you would do a better job of filling out each of the locations. And you don't have to do all of them, but you want to do like, what are the main locations in this vault? So like what, what little bit of treasure is in there and what's going on around here? Uh, one interesting thing I did with my other game was I had an, a hijacked airship that the Emerald Claw had stolen crash into Morgrave University, which helped them break into the vault. And then a bunch of ghouls poured out ghoul spies that were intended to break in here and uh, steal the book. And I make, if things get boring, I may drop that in again. But my, this group has already fought the Emerald Claw and seen ghoul spies already. And I don't want to just keep throwing more ghoul spies at them. So um, I may hang on to that and see where things go. Uh, and instead it will be that, that um, Valentine Flame Touch and her jackalwares have broken in here. And they're the ones that have been sort of, you know, ripping this place off or they're trying to get in to steal the, the, the book. So that's where you may go. Uh, I have one other location. Um, and I can't remember. I, it might be my, uh, go to my drive and I go to my presentations. Um, Sunday D&D. No, it'd be my Wednesday one. Dope. Um, no, it'll be my Sunday one. I'm terrible at this. Yeah, here's the map. So I think, no, that's the vault. Damn it. Okay. I can't find it. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about it, but I'm there. There's one other map that they are currently on and I need to finish up that map. So I got to add that to this too. And we'll see if we have time. But, um, so that was location. So now vault to tower six, we copy the link, right? And we go back to our notes and let's just close that down. And we say, this is tower six vaults. What was the link? I already forgot the hotkey, control K. Um, so now I've got my link to the tower six vaults, but I also need to have um, um, uh, the under passages, the more grave. That's what I need to fill out. So we will, um, and I don't need that anymore. Those are really the only locations uh, going on here. So then we have NPCs. And um, the question here is, you know, we, we review them. So, and again, I have to get rid of this. Uh, this link might work, so hang on. Because the NPCs is one. So I'll just copy this. 
uh, and close this and go here, control K. Okay, it was linked already. And so I click on review NPCs and it goes to my NPC and I got Lack as an NPC they could run into. Um, Flamewind is someone they could run into. Valentine Flame touched is there. Agnes Kernan, who's a um, Morgrave uh, attendant could be there. You know, so those are the NPCs that are going to matter. I could list them on the other page if I needed a quick reference, but I'm pretty good just going to the end. Like I don't have that many NPCs that I can't quickly scan through this list. So uh, that works. So I'm, I'm good with reviewing the NPCs. Uh, and again, I put a little checkbox on there, right? So I've got sort of the checkboxes on the things I've done. Monsters, I know I want an Alip. Uh, I have a uh, Jackal, Jackal Wares. Uh, I have a uh, Lamia Mage, because she's a mage. Uh, I might have Ghoul Spies uh, and a Stone Golem. I think that's pretty good, right? Now, treasure-wise, it would be nice if I could drop uh, some interesting treasure in there, um, and, and particularly to put in that vault. So let's go to my... We're going to go to two different things. We're going to the Eberron factions. I got to get some dice out. It'd be nice if Notion had a dice roll in it, but it doesn't have a dice roll in it. Uh, so let's take a roll. 23. Uh, 23 is a Dol Dorn, Sovereign of uh, Strength and Arms. Uh, Dol Dorn is one of the... Okay, so yeah. It'd be kind of fun, though, to have something from... Uh, oh, look, that's bad. I got a little error in there. Um, something more from Kuls, from from uh, Zendrak. So I think, uh, I mean, Kulsur gets hit a lot, but my, uh, I think the Volkori Drow. So I think we're going to do something. Um, we're going to choose one of the Drow empires for this, uh, but let's go to a magic item. Um, does this treasure link work? No. Um, Oh, why don't we go to uh, Lazy DM Workbook? Yay! And we'll go down to, uh, there's an items. Yeah, so do we want armor? No, because everyone keeps bat jacking up their AC already. Do I really need to jack up more AC? Uh, is there a weapon list? I thought for sure I had a weapon. Yeah, there's a 1d20 weapons. All right, so let's see what kind of weapon. We get eight is a flail. All right, that's kind of cool. I like flails. Flails are neat. Uh, Volcori boomerang. Yeah, we did the Volcori Karate Mart uh, triple glaive uh, was one of the things. Um, but I like a, what did I just roll? Uh, a morning, uh, a flail, right? And what kind of effect could this flail do? Maybe a one time a day flail. Uh, that, didn't, that didn't roll right. Somehow it landed on an edge. Uh, 19 is uh, blinding, ooh, a blinding flail. Like once per day, it can blind its target. That kind of fits drow stuff, right? It's just like shadowy flail, you know, bang, you hit it uh, and it blinds somebody. Uh, I'm gonna dig that, so we'll do that. So, um, and which is the drow? Uh, one of the drow. Uh, Sulatar, Shapers of Elements, uh, Deep Delving, uh, the Umbragan, the Umbragan Drow. So it is an Umbragan Drow Flail. Um, that would be cool. Let's go back in Notion. Uh, should it be plus one? I guess we'll go ahead and make it a plus one flail. Uh, DC 14, one time per day on a hit can blind the target. They're like Drow Classic. Yeah, they're the under, but they fight, they're fighting the, they're, they're not evil necessarily because they're fighting off the, like the, the, the minions of below, right? Um, so that's a cool bit of treasure there. I think, I think that works. So now I've gone through the steps, right? I got five minutes left. Um, and, and the one step that I have failed at is this uh, more the more grave underpassages, and it's because I swear uh, I gotta go back to my Google Drive here. Um, uh, 
I thought for sure. How did I share that with him? Weird. I can't remember how I shared. I had a map that I used for them uh, and I showed it to them, but I don't remember how. Uh, maybe I just did screenshots of it. I don't know. Let me take a look. Uh, drop into my Discord here. Uh, and we'll go to my... I have a lot of Discord servers. Sunday d d So this was the map, right? I showed it, but I don't remember where I came from. Man, bummer. Maybe I just pasted it right off the site. I probably did. And now I got to find out where that was from because I lost I lost it. All right. So in the last five minutes, so I've been talking a lot about using Notion as a way to handle um, uh, as a way to handle campaigns. And so one thing I made, I should have talked about this earlier, is I've created a lazy campaign template. And the link for this um, should be uh, available so that anybody can copy this template into their own notion. And the notion, it, it has all of these same pages that I have here. Um, you know, it has sessions, it has characters, it has locations. Uh, I changed the art up. Um, and, uh, there are some core like template pieces in here that you can delete and add your own. It's got the campaign database already set up. So the whole thing, you can copy this template and it has all this stuff ready to go. And then you just fill it out and then you can customize it however you want to. So you can make your own, what I suggest is duplicate it and your own copy of notion. Uh, and then once it's duplicated there, tweak it, however you want to tweak it, that helps you, uh, make your own game and then save that as a template for you. And tell me what you did, because you, you probably had some ideas that I could incorporate back into the main template. You know, we need to like put this up on GitHub. Um, and that way uh, you have a copy that you can use for any campaign you want to use in the future, right? Keep a separate one aside, and then you could just duplicate that one and whenever you need to make a new, um, whenever you want to make a new campaign. And as you're working in your own campaign notes, when you find things that you're like, wow, it should be easy if I did X, go back to your template and fix the template. And that way you have this template always ready to go. That's what I've been doing. So I have this campaign template. That's the general one that when I have shared so that anybody should be able to access it and copy it to their own copy of notion. And then for example, I used it for my wife's one-on-one -on -one game. So this is my, 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 I have a one-on-one -on -one game that I'm running with my wife. And uh, it has like the characters in it and the NPCs and locations with maps, villains, uh, items. I don't really have any items in this one. I, I didn't talk about, but I also have like Discord templates. These I, I threw in here just as like a scratch pad so I can copy these into Discord when I'm running it. Um, and I imagine other VTTs, you know, people can put their other VTT notes in there, sort of things you just want to keep on hand, macros and stuff like that you want to keep on hand for your game. That's your scratch pad for that. Uh, when I'm done with the game, I drag it down to old session notes and that will, that will stick it under here. Uh, so that way I have sort of a subfolder that holds all my old session notes. That way this top level one doesn't get all crowded up, but I still have access to all my old notes in the future. So that is currently how I am using Notion to prepare for D&D. Uh, what I, I, th I think it's going to be, you know, it took a lot of work to get it set up, which of course is a, always a, a trap. Um, but uh, I think now that it's in place, I think it will be easier for me to prepare my game. It's certainly, it's, it's structured around the eight steps. So it works really well for, with this, the steps from Return to the Lazy Dungeon Master. It means I don't have to copy and paste the notes over all the time. So that really helps. And um uh, you know, by by the use of templates and everything like that, uh, it's really easy. I love kind of adding images to everything. That's a huge difference, right? So I have like my little, you know, little cards for everybody. That is the best picture ever. The changeling that works for the draw. Um, so yeah, it's a really handy way to kind of keep track of all my notes. So that's what I'm playing with now. We'll see how it works. You're going to see more of this in, if I, I'm on the assumption that I continue to use this for game prep. Next week, I'm like, well, wow, that was a terrible mistake. Don't ever use Notion for your game prep but probably not. And um, yeah, so you're going to see me using this more and more. And boy, I'm going to be fielding the, hey, what tool are you using question quite a bit. So uh, take a look at the notes and we will go from there. So I want to thank everybody uh, who came today for the show. And I hope you enjoyed what you saw. 
And, uh, you know, again, I'm not pushing Notion. I don't think it's the end-all be-all. There's certainly some things that are like a little bit more difficult to do that I wish weren't. Uh, and there are definitely other tools out there that are really useful. And if you're using OneNote or everything else, one thing it might do is like, hey, we can look at how we're using our tools a little bit better. So that, that could be good. One trap. There's one thing I want to mention. I want, again, I should have mentioned this earlier, not the very end of the show. Don't get too caught up in screwing around with your tools, right? Prep your games, right? Prepping your games is always more useful than screwing around with a tool. And it's so addictive to go worrying about playing with this stuff. And I did it. I did it for a whole week, right? And you saw, like, I'm missing major parts of my campaign. So you can see an exact example where, like, I should have been spending more time getting my game prepped instead of screwing around with a tool and instead of screwing around with a tool. So tool addiction is a problem all of its own and it's not productive. You're not, it feels like you're making progress and you're not making progress. So keep that in mind. Um, it's, it, you know, keep, keep a handle on how much you're screwing around with your tool versus how much uh, you're actually making your game better. Uh, that's my last little warning. So thank you everybody. Thank you everybody for coming today. I hope you had a good time and uh, I will see all of you next week. So uh, stay home, stay safe, and get out there and play some D&D.